Welcome to Chamber Chat. I'm Judy Taylor, President of the Haversham County Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us. My first guest today is Judge Jim Butterworth, who is actually representing Saving Habersham. Welcome, Judge Butterworth. Thank you very much, Judy. Thank you for having me, and thank you to the Chamber for this program. Well, we appreciate your taking the time to be on this program and we really appreciate all that Saving Habersham does. It is my pleasure to be and here. Judge Butterworth, we see the billboards and we see the information about Saving Habersham, but would you please explain to our audience just what Saving Habersham is? What are you trying to save Habersham from? Thank you for having us, and that's why I really am happy to be here. Saving Habersham is a substance abuse organization to try to wipe out drug abuse in Habersham County. Uh, about five or six years ago, uh, I, I noticed and saw on a daily basis the damage that was being done, primarily by meth in our county. And I got together with... Uh, some other folks, and we started this organization. It, it originally was called Meth Habersham. Mm. We expanded it because there's more to it than meth. Uh, there now are prescription drugs, which are a big problem. And so uh, we're trying to save our county from drug abuse. That's the idea. We are a tax-exempt corporation. It's nonprofit. We have no uh, paid employees. Uh, everybody is a volunteer that works on it. And um, we're doing our best to wipe out and do away with drugs in the county. Well, Judge Butterworth, let's just uh, briefly explain kind of the way that you're into it. I would think it's because that you are the magistrate court chief judge. And you see this on a regular basis. And is that what got you into this? I see it on a daily basis, and I see it in a very dramatic fashion. I see people come before me and they've lost their hair, they've lost their teeth, they've lost their job, uh, and it's a very, very tragic situation. The challenge that we have is that most of us don't ever see that. We don't see the damage that's being done, not only to the people, but to our community. And that's why we started it, to try to get some, uh, to try to educate the community about it. Well, I'm just so glad that you all have started that. and. Uh, there's no doubt that Habersham has a drug problem. In fact, I doubt that you can go most anywhere and, and in any county in Georgia and there's not a drug problem. But my question to you is just how bad is our drug problem? How do we rate or rank with other counties? Well, that's, that is a good question, and, I, and you're correct. Everybody has this problem. And I, and I won't say that ours is any worse or any better than the other counties, but it is bad. And it, it's no reflection on anybody in our county. We have a county of wonderful people, and they're good, solid people. But the drug uh, use is a very insipid uh, thing. It, it crawls into counties and oftentimes into rural counties, and, and that's what's happened in our county. It's not any reflection on any of our people. It's not a reflection on law enforcement or anything like that. Uh, but it is a very big problem for us. And uh, it, it's a problem that touches so many different things. As an example, it's a ter tremendous economic problem. Virtually everybody in the jail, and the sheriff, I think, agrees with me that 80 to 90 percent of the people in jail relate in some way to drug abuse. Now, if you calculate the number of people in jail times the cost of keeping someone in jail a day and multiply that times 365, mm -hmm. it's a tremendous amount of money. And uh, that's something uh, from an economic standpoint. Also, drug abuse uh, makes people stop working. They don't, they don't have any ambition anymore, so they stop working. And so it damages it in that respect also. I also hear employers, and particularly industry employers, saying that they cannot keep their employees because they do drug tests. Yes. And uh, they're looking for people to work for them, and so many times they can't find the person they want because of drugs. That's right. And, you know, that's a, that's a scenario that I see and hear on a regular basis. Uh, 
the, most uh, of the corporations and businesses in the county have a random drug test. They and, do. And so when they have those tests, it is not unusual at all for the employee to say, well, I'm sorry, I'm not going to take the test. Or they, they may test positive. Uh, and so it is a real problem in that respect. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I know that Saving Habersham has a lot of volunteers, as you have already mentioned. Yes. It is operated by volunteers. True. Tell me, what do you have coming up this summer? What are you all doing? Um, we have we have several things coming up. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention, not this summer so much, but the fourth Thursday in September, we will have a panel discussion. It will be at Mount Carmel Baptist Church, mm -hmm. and it will be in the evening, and uh, we will have probably five to six people on a panel. They'll be from industry, from business, from the hospital, from law enforcement, so and from counselors, and we'll talk about this situation. I would love for as many people in the county as possible to come to that. It's just open to the public. It'll be open no to the No charge. No charge, absolutely. We may even have refreshments afterwards, it, it, whatever it takes to get everybody there. Good, uh, good. It's a very important meeting. Beyond that, at Piedmont this year, there's a 4-H there's a program that is a health fair. We'll be taking part in that. Uh, we'll be taking part in the Big Red Apple Festival. Okay. Uh, we try to have as much presence in the community as we can. There'll be a back-to-school bash, mm -hmm. and the, we'll be there uh, trying to help the children to know that to stay away from drugs. So, Well, we don't have a lot of time left, but tell me, how can people help? What can we do? What can people hearing this program do? Join Habersham, uh, Saving Habersham. Well, how do they do that? They get on the, the Internet and go to savinghabersham.org. And uh, bless your heart if you'll come to it. Uh, that's all you have to do. Just come there and look at what we have there. And you'll see our phone number. If, if there's somebody in your family that needs help, there's a hotline there. Uh, but join, and uh, you don't have to pay anything. Just let us know that we, you support us and uh, come to our meetings and take part in it. If we let enough of the community know that the community is opposed to drug abuse, then that will help us a lot. It will. So everybody could be an advocate for saving Habersham. Absolutely. And that would be one way of getting the word out and helping the organization. And thanks to you for letting us do that. Well, thank you again for being on today, and please stay with us. We're going to take a short commercial break, and we will be right back with our second guest. No matter what the occasion or how big the achievement, everyone deserves an award. Look no further than Bob and Ted's trophy in Clarksville. Trophies, medals, plaques, and more. It's what you need when you need it. Family owned and operated since 1974, Bob and Ted's has been rewarding the community for nearly 40 years, offering quality service at competitive pricing, all done with a speedy turnaround. Get what you need when you need it. Hear from your doctors at Chester T Regional Hospital. Any community that's growing like this community is, needs a good medical facility uh, for people to go to. We have an exceptional level of medical and surgical proficiencies in the area. You're going to get the same care here you would anywhere in the country. Chesity does offer a very personal touch and I think that's one of the greatest assets of the hospital. And it should be supported to help keep the community going. This is Mitch Simpson at Mitch Simpson Motors in Cleveland. And we want you to know that if you're looking for a good car, truck, or SUV, you're approved no matter what your credit looks like. We know that bad things are happening to a lot of good people, but you still need a good vehicle to get you where you need to go. So come see us. We're right here in Cleveland at Mitch Simpson Motors. Thank you for staying with us. Our next guest today is Sherry Donnelly with Gertie Mays Floral Studio and the Chambers June Member of the Month. Actually, small Business Member of the Month. Welcome, Sherry. Hey, Judy. And thank you for being on Chamber Chat today. Well, it's an honor and a pleasure. And I want to congratulate you on being the Member of the Month in June. You're a very deserving recipient. Well, I was very surprised. And, <laughs> Sherry, you have such a, a natural talent for 
floral design. Have you always wanted to be a, a, a floral designing person? No. Did you, did no. you when you were eight years old, no. did you think, I want to get no. into this business? No. no, I was the youngest of three girls, and I had a very creative older sister. Mm -hmm. So I grew up thinking I had no creativity skills at all. I cannot believe that. I did. You grew up thinking no I played creative. sports and thought that that was what I was good at, and my sister painted and sewed and did all kind of things with her hands mm -hmm. and artistic and I just figured I but, couldn't do that. But you did come from a creative family. I guess. That is for sure. Now, your name is Sherry. Yes. So how, where does the Gertie Mae come from? Well, my grandmothers are Gertrude uh, Burt and Mabel Mae Ferguson. And Are they from around here? Well, it sounds like they're from around it here. It does! <laughs> but they're actually Yankees from upstate New York. Okay. And, um, but one was a very talented gardener, master gardener, mm -hmm. uh, Mabel Mae, and Gertrude, which was unknown to me, had cutting rows in my grandfather's depression garden. And she naturally designed arrangements for the church and the schools and her sick neighbors. And the main thing my cousins told me was she never kept them. She always gave mm -hmm. them away. So, okay. so I guess it was something in there I didn't know I had. Mm -hmm. Well, how long have you been in business? I've been in business in Habersham County. I'm going on 11 years. Okay. And I started um, working with flowers in a business manner um, when we were in Indiana for about three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Sherry, how did the economy, the downturn in the economy affect you? Because I know that you used to have a storefront mm -hmm. and now you no longer have a storefront, mm -hmm. but also your business has just flourished, flourished since then. It has. It's amazing how sometimes we think a negative um, is just the worst thing and it turns out to be a blessing mm -hmm. in disguise. Um, the retail part of my store waned with the economy. Uh, the phone was still ringing for flowers and deliveries and weddings and arrangements, but the people that were coming in and out of the store to shop for the beautiful items that we carried weren't coming in anymore, and people were watching what they were spending. And then it also became... Because this was the downturn in the economy, and I guess one thing you can do with that would be fresh flowers. Well, yes, ma'am. Um, in some areas, I mean, it is a luxury item, um, but what tended to happen was the average purchase price of an order also diminished. So we lost some people and then we also lost the amount of money they were spending. Um, so I had to make some decisions and um, decided to leave the brick and mortar storefront to um, what I call a studio setting, which is a building I have um, on some secondary property that I turned into a workroom and moved my walk-in cooler and all my supplies and my work table and my office equipment and just started there and I continue to do full service from there for three years. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been a year ago this summer that we switched to just weddings and events. Well I don't think your your business has hurt at all because mm. I have heard about and, and I have seen some of the recognitions that you have been getting in magazines and and in different publications. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think your business has hurt. Well I I think it's I think it's ridden the roller coaster, and I think I just keep reinventing and staying relevant and doing what I need to do and taking um, suggestions from people in the industry to stay afloat and to keep current. Um, I've worked it to death. Mm -hmm. I work at it constantly. And, I know you and, do. And um, it's paying off, and I'm really happy mm -hmm. about that. Well, what has been the most exciting part of all this of your career? What was the most exciting event? Um. There's been a couple. I mean, to, to be to see my work published in a magazine for the first time was exciting. Um, I was also invited to do an interview, somewhat like we're doing, but on a national uh, wedding blog that was on the internet, and mm -hmm. that just came out of left field one day, and that was exciting. As a designer, they wanted to interview me, and um, the thing I did this past spring, which was really exciting, was I traveled to New York City, and I studied with uh, Holly Chapel, who's a renowned designer and got to meet other big designers with 65 men and women from around the United States and outside of our country, including Russia. So that was really exciting. That is. Mm -hmm. Did you learn a lot? I did. I'm I sure learned did. that we all have our own perspective mm -hmm. and that um, this group I'm involved with because of that conference, we all help each other and share ideas and vendors and mechanics. and. Mm -hmm. So we have our own little yes. form that we help each other. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. One thing that I truly believe in is 
know your these people might might not really be your competitors but get to know them and learn from them and benefit from them mm -hmm. rather than trying to just fight with them well i think the thing people don't understand especially in the wedding industry mm -hmm. is there's a lot of work out there and there's plenty That's of work obvious. there's plenty of work for all of us mm -hmm. and we all have a different take on uh design and arranging and flowers and there's just something for everybody and there's really enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well since you mainly specialize in weddings now, mm -hmm. what would you like to see change about the way weddings are done and maybe what would you like to see stay the same? I think one thing I'd really love to see happen is I'd love to see our economy take off again mm -hmm. and um, some of the DIY um, projects that people are doing for their own weddings We'll go back to um, professionals being paid to do what we do for a living. Mm -hmm. um, it's fun and exciting to see people try and do what the professionals do, but it'd be nice that we could recapture that business again that we mm -hmm. had before. And now so many people are just trying to do it themselves. Right. That's what you're saying. DIY, yes, ma'am. Yes. And, uh, and I, I would really love to see the mason jars go away. Mm -hmm. hate to insult mm -hmm. anybody with that, but mm -hmm. I think we've kind of done that long enough. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see things go back to a clean line more traditional, upscale, lush flower arrangements. Yeah. Because oh, I agree with you on that. That uh, Now, I only have one child, one daughter, mm -hmm. and she got married. She had a destination wedding. Mm -hmm. She got married on the that. rim of the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. But we, we had a, a wedding planner to arrange mm -hmm. all everything mm -hmm. out there at the Grand Canyon. I think that sounds fabulous. But she wanted a traditional wedding. Mm -hmm. She wanted the flowers. Mm -hmm. She wanted everything to be. So a, traditional with a twist. Well, it was a traditional <laughs> with a twist, but it was pretty traditional. Yeah. The long gown, the mm -hmm. whole bit. Mm -hmm. On the rim. Yes, mm -hmm. on the rim. That mm -hmm. is right. But uh, uh, Sherry, we just have a, a second left. But what advice would you give to young entrepreneurs trying to get into a business? Maybe a floral business, but any small business. Well, I think any small business. One is you want to make sure that you have enough startup funds. Um, that's always a, a problem for startup businesses. And um, to to stay in that niche that you are, are specializing in and the thing that you do the best, don't try and be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, do that thing that you do so well and keep doing it. And the other thing as, a, as an older generation member, if you're not savvy about social media, you better get savvy because that's really where all of our work um, is displayed and, and people find us through the Internet. That is right. And the other thing, of course, is join the Chamber of Commerce. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for being on Chamber Chat today. Thank you. Please stay with us. We're going to take another short commercial break, and we will be right back with our last guest for today. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 through 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. This is Mitch Simpson at Mitch Simpson Motors in Cleveland. We've got one of the largest selections of good used cars, trucks, and SUVs anywhere in North Georgia. We've always got about 150 to choose from, and most of them are priced less than $10,000. Check out what we've got today on our website. It's MitchSimpson.com. Or better yet, just come see us. 
We're right here in Cleveland at Mitch Simpson Motors. What is the Big Green Egg? It's the world's best smoker and grill. The original American ceramic cooker has rewarded its owners with amazing results since 1974. The Big Green Egg is the most unique barbecue product on the market with more smoker and grill capabilities than any other conventional cookers combined. And it can be used year round with its weatherproof finish. There's a size and style to fit your needs for a new cooking experience. Check them out today at Bob and Ted's Trophy Shop in Clarksville. If you're looking for a grill, you found Thank you for staying with us. Our last guest today is a, per, a well-known person in Haversham and surrounding counties, John Barrow with McDonald's. Welcome, John. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, I'm just excited about your being on here. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I want to hear about how you got into McDonald's and just tell us your McDonald's story. All right. Well, uh, it starts off, it, it's a family business and, and uh we got into it when I was 10 years old. My, my uh, mom and dad, my dad was approaching retirement age. He was in his early 50s. And he was. And he had had another career, I guess. Correct. He'd had two careers. One, he was a, a high school teacher, principal, coach, and then he went into uh, the publishing industry. He sold school books mm -hmm. and did fairly well with that. And uh, he was running the company and decided he wanted to go into business for himself. So he and mom looked at uh, all sorts of different ventures from a car dealership to a hotel, but they decided that McDonald's was the best fit for him. And uh, they, Dad went through all the training with the McDonald's Corporation. He got to be an approved operator, and the McDonald's Corporation said, we've got a, a McDonald's available in, in Cornelia, Georgia. You'd be interested. And, and, and uh, Mom and Dad said, by all means, they had both grown up in small towns. Uh, and so we moved here in 1983 and opened the, our first store here in Cornelia. Well, that was a lucky day for Haversham County. It was a lucky day for us as well. Yes, well, it was a fortunate day for Haversham County when your family decided to move here. But tell us, tell me about your companies now, because okay. you actually uh, run the companies yes, now. Yes, your mother may still be in the business, I don't know. Correct, correct. But uh, I know that you run the businesses now. But how many locations do you have? Tell us about your businesses. Well, uh, since 1983, when we opened up the, the first McDonald's here in Cornelia, we've been able to expand and we've got locations in Cornelia, Clarksville. So those are the two Habersham County locations. Mm -hmm. We've got Clayton and Cleveland. We bought uh, the, the restaurant down in Commerce about three years ago, tore it down and rebuilt it. And then we've got two a little bit further south in Brazelton and Hushton. And across all those seven stores, what we kind of have a the, the northeast corner of the state here and across all those seven stores depending on the time of year we probably have about 450 employees across all the restaurants and support people mm -hmm. well we appreciate that yes ma'am the chamber is all about job creation job development so we appreciate all the jobs that, that you and your family have created through mcdonald's yes ma'am and, and i'll tell you one thing like i remember uh in high school sometimes or, or growing up through school people would say now if you don't study don't do your homework You'll wind up working at McDonald's the rest of your life flipping burgers. I've heard that. Well, uh, uh, two, two responses to it. One, it's not a bad thing. People, people still have to eat. But number two, uh, one of the greatest things about McDonald's is, is you can come in at an entry level as a cashier or a fry cook. And if you've got the hard work, the discipline, uh, you work well with customers, you work well with the other employees, mm -hmm. you can go as far as you want in that business. And, and we've got kind of our executive team, they've been with us for decades. Uh, three of the guys in particular here in Habersham County, one, our director of operations, he's from Habersham County. He started in, I believe, 1988, just working mm -hmm. in the kitchen flipping burgers. Now he's helping to run the company. Mm -hmm. Another fella here in town, he's over all our training. Uh, he started, I believe, in 1985. It, it was his first job, and mm -hmm. it's been his only job. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's uh, gone up through the ranks. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. And he's part of the executive team right now. And, and another fellow is a supervisor with us. He's got two restaurants. Um, so we've got great people with us. And, and one of the great things about McDonald's in our industry is the, is the opportunity and the potential. Because you can come in, and if you just want to be a fry cook, you know, if, if you're in high school and you need a summer job, we've got that for you. But if you want to make a career out of it as well, uh, it, it's a great business to be in. People always have to eat. Right. And John, I know a little bit about that, that you, that McDonald's develops their people. Yes, ma'am. And uh, because there is a McDonald's University. Hamburger U. Hamburger University. Hamburger University, right. yes. I've been. Yes, ma'am. And it's, uh, it's an accredited. Sure, sure. It's, uh, 
uh, th there's uh, several stages of the management development process, and you can go to school in Atlanta for a week, and then you go to a school in Atlanta for another week and another week, and as you work your way up, you eventually go to Hamburger U, mm -hmm. Hamburger University, which is... John, I have just got to add this. Yeah. I happen to know that you are a Georgia Tech graduate. That's right. Yes. Ramblin' Rack from Georgia Tech. Yes, I happen to know that. Yeah. And uh, so a Georgia Tech graduate yes. then went to Hamburger Yee. Correct. Correct. I think that is amazing. I yes. love it. I love it. I've got the diploma it. in my office. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah, that's right. Now, tell us, John, I know you, and I know you personally. Yes, ma'am. And I, oh, I just know that you would have a very solid approach to business and Tell us about your business philosophy, sure. how you approach your uh, uh, your business and, and your employees. Sure. What, uh, when I meet with all our managers, uh, I, I tell them, uh, and we talk about it, we say, our mission, and in a lot of our stores we have a big banner, customers can't see it, but all the employees see it, and it says, our mission is to be the best McDonald's in the world. Because mm -hmm. if, if a McDonald's in California or New York or Texas or China, for that matter, is going to be the best in the world, then why not Cornelia, Georgia Absolutely. or Clarksville or And I Clayton. think you are. <laughs> well, thank you. You're kind. We, we, we do our best. We try. But um, th that, that's our goal, to be the best McDonald's in the world. And in our industry, we have three things that we try to do. We try to offer the, the highest quality product we can for, for the price you're paying. We have, try to have the best service. So it's got to be fast, but it's also got to be friendly and accurate. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go through drive through and get the wrong order, mm -hmm. or nobody right. wants to to have a rude server or, or be slow. So quality product, fast, accurate, and friendly service, and lastly, a clean restaurant because it's a restaurant. Nobody wants to come in with sticky mm -hmm. floors and trash overflow in a dirty bathroom. So those three things, quality, service, and cleanliness, are, are our main focuses. And it, we tell our people if we can execute that at an excellent level every day, uh, we will have no competition. Mm -hmm. If we can be excellent, very few other people are excellent, so that's that's one of our main goals. And then the second thing is to uh, to really invest in our people at at the management and executive level. Uh, we really uh, focus on developing our people. Yes, you do. Because a lot of people might come in just thinking this is a you know a dead end job that can be further from the truth. And if and if you want and if you're looking for a career or if you're looking something for a summer or a few years. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can provide that for you. We've got employees, like I mentioned, that just started out as fry cooks. We've got a lady found herself in a tough spot. Her husband left her. She had two babies, and she had worked at McDonald's in, in high school, and she came and said, I need a job. Can you help me? And she's great with the people, great with the customers. And she, after several years, she, she found herself running a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So great opportunity there. Right. Our time is actually up, but uh, quickly tell yes, us, John. I want the I want the community to hear sure. about your involvement in the community, oh, and goodness. I know you're involved because I'm in Rotary with sure. you. Yes, you have spoken. You have been graduation speaker at uh, at Leadership Habersham. Sure. Yes, ma'am. So tell us a little bit uh, more. Well, uh, we, we take our responsibility very seriously to be a, a, a positive influence in the community. So we're involved in the school system, public and private schools, from elementary all the way to high school, um, athletics, band, academics. Um, we help support churches and charities and other just community events, like uh, with the Better Hometown here in Cornelia, we host the, the New Year's Eve Big Red Apple Drop yes, at our, at our parking did. lot there in the uh -huh. Cornelia store, always a fun time. So we take our responsibility seriously to try to, to make our community a better place to live and work. And we appreciate that. Yes, John, thank you for being on Chamber Chat today. It's my pleasure. And I usually end with a quote. And my quote today is a tribute to all three of the guests I have had today. But it is by Winston Churchill. And it says that a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, but an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. Thank you for being with us. I'll see you next time.